Hello everyone and welcome to our 13th class. We are still on chapter 5, Fundamentals of Traffic Flow and Queuing Theory. And in the previous class, we started talking about queuing theory. And we started to discuss different um, concepts and also different components of a queuing system. We talked about different statistics that we would like to use to analyze a queuing system. And we also introduced different types or disciplines of a queuing system. And today, we continue our discussions by going through the DD1 system. For the first queuing system that we will be talking about, we'll start talking about DD1 queuing. So what is this? This is a deterministic arrival and deterministic departure and we only have one channel. And the reason that we start with this system is that uh, this system could be analyzed both graphically or mathematically and it provides us with a good understanding of queuing system. So the way that I'm going to go forward is that we are going to learn DD1 queuing through going, by going through uh, an example and learning exactly how everything works. So one of the things that we want to do is to have a common unit for arrival and departure rate. 
So lambda or our arrival rate is 480 vehicles per hour and this happens for the first 20 minutes. What I want to do is that I want to convert that vehicle per hour to vehicle per minute. So I divide it by 60 and what I have is that my arrival rate in the first 20 minutes is 8 vehicles per hour. I do the same for after the first 20 minutes or after 8.20. So my arrival rate is 120 vehicles per hour. That means that each minute I have two vehicles arriving. So this is after the first 20 minutes. Each minute two vehicles arrive. How about our departure rate? We know that we can process or it takes us 15 seconds to process one vehicle. That means that in each minute, we can process four vehicles, right? Because in each minute, we have 60 seconds. So mu was 60, was uh, mu, uh, sorry, the time that it takes for each vehicle is 15 seconds per vehicle. So if you want to write mu, it is actually one over 15 vehicles per second, right? Because the time was 15 seconds. So for one vehicle, it, take, it takes 15 seconds. And if you want to convert this to vehicle per minute, you just need to multiply it by 60. So that's what has happened here. So our service rate or departure rate is four vehicles per minute. And this is constant and is the same for all times. Okay? Now, we have the, let's only focus on the first 20 minutes. So when T is greater than zero, and is less than 20. We know that our arrival rate is eight vehicles per minute. So if I ask you how many vehicles arrive in the first minute, what is the answer? So you just say that I multiply 8 by 1, so 8 vehicles arrive in the first minute, right? If I ask you how many vehicles arrive by the fifth minute, so you just multiply 8 by 5 and you say that 40 vehicles arrive by the fifth minute, and so on. So if I ask you how many vehicles arrive by uh, the tth minute, you just multiply it 8 by t and you say 80 vehicles, correct? So what we are doing here is that we have the arrival rate and we want to find the number of vehicles that arrive. So we are doing an integration from 0 to t of the arrival rate right and that is going to give us a t so if t for example is a certain number we just put that value there this is exactly like when someone gives you the acceleration rate and says that if my acceleration rate is A and my initial speed is uh, zero at time zero, what is gonna be my speed at time T? So you just say that it's gonna be the integral from zero to T of A dT, which is gonna be A T, right? Exactly the same thing is happening here. We have the rate of arrival. We wanna find the number of vehicles that arrive.
So that's what I have done here without going to integration. And in the next example, we go through the integration because in the next example that you see, our rate of arrival is not a constant number. It's a function of t. So the total number of vehicles that arrive by t um, is 80 for the first 20 minutes. And if you think about how many vehicles have arrived exactly at time 20, that would be 160 vehicles. You just multiply 8 by 20, right? Now, if we want to find the number of vehicles that arrive after the first 20th minute, we know that at that time our arrival rate is 2, right? So it's going to be, um, it, it, our arrival rate is 2. So 2 needs to be multiplied by t. And we also need to fix for the number of vehicles that have arrived by that time. So we have 160 vehicles that arrived. And you need to also fix for t. And for t's that are greater than 20, this works. So this needs to be combined converted to t minus 20 so that when your t is 21 here you actually multiply 2 by 1 and then add 160 to that so it's just fixing for the boundary conditions here so the number of vehicles that have departed what is that so we know that our departure rate was 4 and was a fixed number for all t. So 4t is the number of vehicles that have departed by time t. So what do we have now? We have arrival before t equal to 20. We have arrival after t equal to 20. And we have the departure. What I want to do is that I want to draw these three on a on a graph so that you can see how the q lengths and time in the system changes over time so on the y-axis i have number of vehicles this is actually cumulative number of vehicles that you have here on the x-axis i have time in minutes we have converted everything to minutes so between time 0 and 20 my arrival rate was 8 and i'm drawing line of 8t here okay so this is my arrival between t equal to 0 and 20 and then my arrival changed to 2t so from this point until the end my arrival rate is 2 and the number of vehicles that arrive is found by line 2t so i'm dry i'm drawing line 2t here and here to fix for boundary condition this point is given by 160 plus 2 into t minus 20 and every other point is also given by that line so how about departure my departure rate was 4 so if i draw line 4t here this is going to be my departure. Okay. So, <clears throat> I have a lot of information that are shown on this graph. And we want to go through each of those 
one by one. The first thing that we want to talk about is that if someone asks you what is the number of vehicles that has arrived at a certain time, for example, at time 40, what is the total number of vehicles that have arrived? How do you determine that? Think about it. How many vehicles have arrived at time 40? Well, one way is to plug 40 into this equation. The reason that we plug it into this equation is that 40 is greater than 20. But how do you find that graphically? You start from 40, you go all the way up until you hit the departure curve. Then you go horizontally until you hit the number of vehicles that have arrived. So if you do that, you would find out that you're going to have 200 vehicles that have arrived by that time. If someone asks you how many vehicles have departed by that time, so the first question, let me write them here. How many, how many vehicles arrive by t equal to 40? So I found that and it is 200. The other question is that how many vehicles departed by t equal to 40? How do you do that? You put 40 into this equation that is going to give you 160 or again you go up from 40 up until you hit the departure curve and then you go horizontally and you find out that 160 vehicles have departed so now if I want if I ask you how many vehicles are in the system at time 40 how do you determine that? How many vehicles are in the system at time 40? So if you know that 200 vehicles have arrived by 40, 160 have left, the difference of the two, which is 40, is the number of vehicles that exist in the system. So that would be 200 minus 160 or the length of this line so always the distance between the arrival and departure curve at a certain time the perpendicular distance along the y-axis that gives you the number of vehicles that are in the system okay so let me clean up the figure a little bit Now, if I ask you at which time we have, let's say, 100 vehicles in the system, or no, at which time we have 100 vehicles arrived at the system? At what time 100 vehicles have arrived? So you go from 100 until you hit this line and you go down. This is the time 
at which the 100th vehicle have arrived the system what time this 100th vehicle has departed if we have a first in first out system if we do have that you just need to keep going and at this time the 100th vehicle has departed the system so what does that tell you if the vehicle arrives at this time that I have here departs at this time the difference between those two times or the length of this horizontal line that is the time that vehicle spend in the system or in other words that is the delay of 100th vehicle the seat that 100th vehicle was delayed in the system for this amount of time other things that you can determine by looking at this figure is the longest queue which is going to happen at this point because from this point on the departure rate goes down so this is the longest queue that you can find out and also the longest vehicle delay you can find those from this figure too and one last thing is that the area between the arrival curve and the departure curve this gray area shows total time or delay in the system so with this figure you can pretty much figure out a lot of things that is happening in the queuing system so there are a few things that um, I have talked about them in the previous slide but I just want to revisit them here when the arrival curve is above the departure curve a queue exists if that's not the case what do what is going to happen so maybe i ask you this question can i have a condition where i have something like this this is my departure and this is my arrival can i have such a thing you can't because what this means is that at this point in time the number of vehicles that depart the system is more than the total number of vehicles that have arrived that cannot happen so your departure curve cannot ever be above your arrival curve so what you would see is that either departure and arrival are on top of each other so this is when you don't have any queue or your arrival is above your departure so you can have a condition like this that this shows both arrival and departure or you have a condition where this is your departure this is your arrival and arrival is more than departure and you're going to have a queuing happening in your system so you have vehicles a queue that is forming so when the arrival curve is above the departure curve you have queue so at a point in time eventually your arrival curve is gonna hit your departure at this point Q is completely gone and Q dissipates right your arrival is equal to your departure so if you want to find that point how do you do that you set 
number of vehicles that arrive equal to number of vehicles that departed because these two curves have intersected at that point so let's do that in our example so we know that at this point that they intersect in the previous graph we were past t equal to 20 so our arrival rate is 160 plus not our arrival rate the number of vehicles that have arrived is equal to 160 plus 2 into t minus 20 we said that equal to the number of vehicles that have departed so if these two values are the same it means that the q is zero because the q is the difference of the two so if you do that and you solve it for t you will find out at, that at t equal to 60 the q is going to be gone so always to find out at which time the queue is gone you need to set the number of vehicles that have arrived equal to the number of vehicles that have departed both as functions of t and when you solve that equation you will find out at which time the queue is going to be gone that's what we did here So if you think about it, Q started to form at 8, it dissipates at 9, and at that time, a total of 200 vehicles have arrived and departed. Where does 240 comes from? You either put t equal to 60 in the arrival or in the departure both of them are going to give you 240 seconds so if we want to find individual vehicle key, the, I mean, a vehicle's delay assuming FIFO queuing discipline the horizontal distance between arrival and departure curve is going to give that to us. I showed that uh, I showed it to you on the figure. So we talked about this uh, 160th vehicle vehicle to arrive will have the longest delay, uh, and that is 20 minutes. So this is the point that that happens. The total length of Q is given by the vertical distance between arrival and departure. We talked about that. And the longest Q happens at T equal to 20. It is 80 vehicles. I showed that to you earlier on the figure and total vehicle delay is the summation of delays of each individual vehicle and if you think about it in a continuous system that would be the area between the arrival and departure because the delay of each vehicle if you again we may think about our example the delay is given by these lines so if you have a continuous system and add all of these together you are finding the area and that would be the total delay So the areas between arrival and departure can be determined by summing triangular areas and if you want to do that we have a dt uh, that is half of 80 into 20 plus half of 80 into 40 that is going to give us a total delay of 240 vehicles per minute 
So if you want to find out what is the um, average delay, you just need to divide this by total number of vehicles, which is 240. So that means that the average delay is 10 minutes. Average queue length, if you want to find it, is 240 uh, vehicles per minute. And if you divide it by 60 minutes, that is going to give you 40 vehicles on average that are in the system. All right, let's stop this class here. And in the next session, we will go through another example of a DD1 queuing system. And we also go through different stochastic queuing systems. Have a good one.